All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Gregory Favaza, who is the podcast host of Your Transformation Station. Gregory, how you doing? Uh, do you prefer Greg? Uh, Greg, Gregory's fine. Uh, I stick by Greg, but people have their preferences. All righty, Greg, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Yourself? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for asking. We like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself, what you like to do for fun, That'd be great. Excellent. So for me, I have a huge history. I to just encapsulate myself and my identity. I started a podcast called Your Transformation Station. Also started an additional podcast called Real Transformation Examples. And each episode, I highlight the transparency inside a transformation. And the reason why I do that is a stepping stone to connecting clarity in my life, which was why I started it. But the intent was just that so I can improve myself. And it's now turned into something much bigger than I expected. And well, I mean, here I am right here. And <laughs> what I do for fun, I would say it's, I mean, I, I love to fucking learn. Like there, there's, that's my idea of fun. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't care about going out drinking or spending time with people that really don't give a shit about me. I, I care about keeping it close with the ones that matter and just, just learning, bettering myself for the next day. Yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite way to learn? Is it like books? action being around people mentorships d all the above like i definitely need to read every day i need a hard copy in my hands to get my my brain to articulate all these things that are pop, that are just popping up every day like if i don't read it's just jumble but i prefer audio i prefer observing indirect and direct um, interactions i love any kind of aspect that I can take and mold into myself to a newer version of myself. There we go. I love it. Tell us a little bit more about your motivation. What gets you up and keeps you going every day? What gets me up and keeps me going? I had to take it away from my military experience. I served five and a half years in the military and I did not have anything to anything solid, anything philosophical that was passed down from my family and what really motivated me when I was active and to this very day it's it's my purpose it's to better myself physically mentally and spiritually and to always challenge myself no matter what the situation is that's like my little motto that I remind myself because I'm setting the example to my family to my firstborn son if I don't do it how it should be done appropriately. He's not going to get the good example that I didn't get when I was a kid. Yeah, I love that, man. So there's a little bit of like always improving on yourself, but also being a role model. Yes. Yes. There we go. Let's jump into your dreams and goals. Tell us about what you want for your life and your vision for the podcast. Hmm. What do I want for my life and my vision with the podcast? That, that, that's, that's a difficult question because we all want so many different things and we're constantly fluctuating on what these short-term goals are and what leads to this long successful outcome that makes our transformation, that makes this desirable thing happen. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily the very material thing or the idea, but it's more of a sense of how I want to feel when I get there. Because no matter what I want, I can always settle for less. I can always be happy with just the bare minimum. And that's really what I want to focus on is the feeling of when you get there. That is what motivates me. That's what is the long-term goal is being happy when I'm there, but also being happy 
living in this moment during the entire process. And then for the podcast, which was that final question, I just, I want it to grow. I want it. I want everybody to take something away from this because there's a lot of history of me that I'm still dissecting that we all need to look at. Like we can watch a movie and not even catch half of what the fuck they just said until you rewatch it again. And maybe even a third time. And you're like, whoa, why did, how did I not catch that? You know, is that, is that because there's a part of us that we were not ready to understand it because there were so many other things running in our brain that we just couldn't focus on these little things. If that's the case. Then what's happening every day when we're living, what things are we missing? That's what I want to highlight is these little contextuals that just go right by that make us authentic, that make us who we are. Yeah, man. I love that. And so really your dreams and goals are to really dive into that self journey, be happy in the moment. And when you arrive at the next moment, Yes. as well as sharing that growth and journey with other people so that they can learn something and take something from it for themselves. That is, that is correct. Along with embracing my vulnerabilities, I come from a very traumatic childhood to this day haunts me. I mean, I sleep next to an AR-15 right alongside my bed because not because of the military, because of my childhood. And those are things that I'm learning how to live with every day. But I want to teach people that it's okay that that shit happened because you're not the only fucking one because I'm going to get up on stage. I'm going to tell everybody everything that I went through and make it the new norm that it's okay to be this way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. And so you're not really on a journey to try to let go of that stuff and move on as much as you're trying to embrace it and grow from it. Fuck yeah. I want society to grow from it because we're all hiding from it. There we go, man. I love it. Well, tell us a little bit more about the trigger point for really diving into your journey, the vulnerabilities, and what really got you on this journey. The trigger points that I would say it's, it's the old school philosophy. This Old, this my uh, <clears throat> this philosophy that my parents have and other older generations have it, there's a commonality it's sweeping it underneath the rug it's it's not addressing shit and pretending like it's okay that angers me because it's like you want to just let it go and let it just go underneath and then pretend like nothing matters. If, if that's the thing you choose to do with one thing, do you think it's possible that that applies into every decision you make? Do you think it applies to you not getting your job promotion? Do you think it applies to you not being the person you want or living the life you thought you deserve, but instead, no, I'm just going to, just fuck it. I'm gonna sweep it underneath the rug. It's no big deal. I wasn't meant to be this greatest podcast host. I'm okay with just being number 1 million, just at the very bottom ranks. Fuck no. I want everybody to hear me. I want everybody to understand what it means to be authentic, what it means to be vulnerable. I want to illustrate a new definition of fucking authentic leadership. I love that. Authenticity is huge for me. So often in my life, I've felt like I haven't been able to be authentic, whether that be because people around me, Christian culture, school life, my job, whatever it may be, man, I just always feel like there are things trying to keep me from being me. So I get yes. that idea of the sweep it under the rug mm -hmm. philosophy. There's uh, too many fucking in groups and out groups and expectations and assertions 
based off educated guesses when people don't have a fucking clue. It's because they don't know themselves. If they actually spent time alone away from their significant others out of a relationship and put themselves in isolation for years like I did, the fact that the fact that I what I've witnessed, I know there's not one person that can live in a that can just live on their own. They need to have a relationship with somebody. If you could separate yourself, then you could see what factors are affecting your belief system. What factors are making you go a certain way because you talk with this person or the fact that you need to have your, your parents in your life because they're your fucking parents. If they do you no good, fuck them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for sure. <laughs> oh, that's that was that caught me off. That was funny. Sorry. Yes, I have that. I I do that on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, but no, I I genuinely think you're right. Like, if your parents aren't serving you, if they're if you're like the there's this metaphor, crabs in a bucket, right? And if you're the crab and you're trying to climb out the bucket because you don't like being trapped in that bucket, what the other crabs will do is pull you back down into the bucket with them. Nobody gets out of the bucket. So if you're trying to get out of the bucket and the people around you, whether it be your parents, your closest friends, and they're trying to pull you back down to the bucket, you need to distance yourself from them until you can get to the point where you can love them from afar and still grow how you need to grow. But when your feelings and your lifestyle is dependent on those relationships, I think you're right. I think you need to cut them for a little bit. Yes. Or yes. a lot of bit if they're that bad. <laughs> so I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about vulnerability and mm. what it means to you. Oh, yes. What it means to be vulnerable is to shed the skin. It's to be ass naked in front of the crowd and be okay with it. Literally illustrating every flaw you think it's almost like radical honesty getting it on the fucking table the very first time is the hardest thing but once you do it you can do it in a way where it's articulate and you catch people off guard where it's like i i have adhd i'm fucking bipolar i take medication i have ptsd i was sexually abused by my fucking brother growing up living with a trauma living with an assailant and then my parents not knowing how to do it because they turned to god hoping that they that he or she would help me when i suffer from spiritual discernment i don't give a fuck about any of that because i create who i am right now I would not be a fucking product of my own environment, but I'm going to be a creation of my doing. Yeah. That's fucking vulnerability is being okay with everything that's happened and not using that as a handicap, but using that to go further. There we go. Well, awesome, man. If there were one or two people, that you could meet right now. This could be a specific person or a type of person. And they would help you really get your message of vulnerability and authenticity out there, as well as do your own journey with yourself. Like maybe they can't help you. I don't know how people help with one's journey, but mm -hmm. who would that person be and how would they help you out? So one person, it, it won't cover it. I want it. I want to hear from everybody that has their unique experience, because no matter what we go through, there's always something that I take away from every conversation that helps me understand something that's happened in my past. That it helps me understand something that I'm going through right now. That helps me understand how to get to where I'm going for my future whether it's this conversation right now with the crab in the bucket, I didn't hear that. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to hone that and make it mine. And I'm going to use that later on. I want to 
get everybody's experience so then I can connect the clarity in my own past with everything that I went through that will help me give everyone the ability to articulate the words like I'm trying to do right now with my history. Yeah, absolutely. So just multiple conversations with multiple people. Yes. Their unique experiences. Yes. Everyone. I want everybody's fucking conversation. Everybody has a unique approach and they all need to be heard. And I want to be the person to listen. There we go, man. I love it. Well, awesome. Let's jump into our thriving three now. What's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. I'm going to go with book. Atomic Habit, Habits, James Clear. Fuck, that resonates so much. When I first started reading it, holy shit. Okay, like the military, it really highlights habits and how to change your identity with just these little one percenters. Like, oh my God, like, that's how I started podcast. I, I just did the one thing. I told myself I'm a fucking podcaster. Even though I don't have a podcast, I haven't started one. I'm a fucking podcaster. Just by doing that daily, I already started to do little incremental habits that somebody who has a podcast would do. We'll be like, oh, well, I probably should buy a fucking microphone. I should probably start opening up all these different social media platforms and start utilizing social media. I was in the army for five and a half years. I never gave a shit about social media. Now I'm on it. I'm addicted to it. Like everybody else in America. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that that's okay. Because what this book has taught me, it, it taught me that you can, this one percenters, these little incremental gains, you can do anything you fucking want. It's, it's really not that hard. I mean, when I graduated high school, my fucking, I hate when people even reference high school. So I want to punch myself in the face, but here I am doing it. So I have to continue. But my fucking guidance counselor told me, do not even bother finishing, uh, trying to even go for a uh, a second, uh, what do you call it? Associate's degree. He said, you should join the military and fucking just do that because that's the only way you're going to be successful. His name's Chris Lorenz and I fucking hate him. That has stuck with me for a long time, a long time. But I said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm still going to go try to do it. I went, did it, but I didn't pass. I got fucking academic probation. And then I ended up leaving and joined the military. And I thought he was right. I thought it was a self fulfilling prophecy that was meant to be. But then right when I graduated, I went back, correction, right when I got out of the military, I went back and then I fucking graduated. Now I'm doing my, my bachelor's and I have less than six months. I'm going to get that. And then who knows what the fuck else I want to do. Yeah, absolutely, man. I am a firm believer in those one percenters becoming the person that you want to become and not listening to the noise. So I'm glad that that's what you're doing, man. Thank you. Really glad that's what you're doing. And what's one way you like to take care of yourself? Mm, my God. Fucking saunas, man. Like you, if nobody is saunaing and nobody, if you're not getting your ass into one, you have no idea what you're missing out on. The, the health benefits alone by being inside a sauna for just 20 minutes will increase the longevity in your life. There is enough scientific research to prove it. And I'm not that asshole that will say there's scientific research when there is no fact scientific research. Like, have you ever came across somebody who's the fucking, what do you call it, a world's or number one selling author? Like, everybody's a fucking best selling author. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't ever use those fucking words unless it's factual. That's what I'm doing. I'm telling you, there is some fucking research. Yeah. There we go. But do get in the sauna. Holy shit. It will do you wonders. Get in the sauna. There we go. Yes. And what is one action step that you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to hear everybody's unique experience and continue on your own journey? Real action steps. Look in the fucking mirror and tell yourself what you hate about yourself. Tell yourself these things out loud. 
Why? Once you do that, you'll, you will bring it out. You'll hear these thoughts out loud. And this is where you can logically reason with yourself why you think that way. I hate myself because I feel like I just don't matter. Really? Is it the fact that I think that or the fact that other people think that about me because they don't understand themselves and then impacted me because of their false beliefs and no value or self-esteem in themselves, giving me the exact same thing that they have. Now I'm that kind of person when in fact it is nothing. I was just a victim in my environment and it's not even real. It's because they kept telling me this every day I started to believe it. That shit is very, very real. That is how they train the military. Literally, they wipe your mind and they make you fall into line, into suit with a foundation of beliefs. You do that every day. You become what they want and it's mechanical. It's beautiful. I fucking love it. And that. I hone that shit into the person that I want to be, but it's the exact same thing when you're surrounding yourself with toxic fucking people, even though you think you might not look in the fucking mirror and let your brain think and feel these thoughts come to life and just say it out loud and you'll be surprised. And once they're out, acknowledge it. And say, this isn't fucking real. I am not this person. These are, these are passed down either from my, my social upbringing or from people that aren't even my real friends or peers or just people that want to see me fail because their life fucking sucks. Or they're jealous because I got a hot ass significant other and they got nobody. Because I got a beautiful baby boy and they... They don't want to settle down, and now it's too fucking late. No matter what it is, people will bring you down and make fun of your inferiority complex because you are doing great with your life. So these thoughts linger, and if you don't purge them out, they will alter your decision-making process and make you do things that you don't do. So let it come out, embrace it, and fucking purge it. There we go. I love it. At first, when you said, tell yourself what you hate about yourself, I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I love the uh, the coming out on the end of it of like, this isn't real. This is from yes. other people. This is not who I'm, who I actually am. Yes. Uh, it's, it was a- it's all there. It's, it's all there. Like you have to let it come out. Like, I don't want to say, oh, just, just, just tell us like why you feel this way. No, 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 no. We all have self-critical fucking beliefs. Get that shit out right now and then think about it and then logically reason with it. I want to say the most hurtful thing I can say to myself and understand why am I doing that? Why? Yeah, absolutely. I love that, man. Well, I got a couple more questions for you. Tell us about the power of consistency in your life and tell us how we can be more consistent for those of us who are struggling with consistency. Mm, yes. Consistency. That is the thing that separates master from an individual that just says they want to do it. That is something that takes consecutive application it when when, see when i think about consistency at first i thought it had to be perfect every day it had to meet the specific criteria that i made in my head that it had to have x y and z if it didn't have it i can't fucking do it today i have to restart and i have to do it next week like some fucking um somebody that's starting a gym membership at the beginning of a fucking new year. Like, no, why do I have to wait till fucking next year? Why do I have to wait till next week? Consistency, just do it now. If I do it half ass tomorrow, it doesn't matter. 
the fact is I'm still doing it. That is the hardest thing for me to grasp to this day because I am a perfectionist. And there's a lot behind why I am is because it was survival of because I was a perfectionist. I have to have these certain things in order because of my history, but that's okay. If I'm doing it every day, that is what is going to make the difference. And that's what's going to make a desired outcome realistic. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love that. Our last question requires a bit of pretext. So you know how there are people on the planet who have a really fixed mindset. They're not willing to accept help. They're not willing to accept change. Sometimes they live their whole life like that. Sometimes they'll die like that. Yes. Other times they'll make the switch at some point in their life and they'll have more of a growth mindset, willing to accept help, willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? Beautiful fucking question. I appreciate it. Yes. No, like that's a good question. It's very deep in psychology for people that don't understand that. This is, this is a fantastic question here. The catalyst right there, it's a, a drastic event, something that will take you off of autopilot. I'm not, I'm not talking like, oh, changing your fucking routine by going to a different coffee shop. I'm talking the fact that you just got into a car accident. Your fucking car flipped three times. You're in the hospital. You're, you're probably going to get a fucking amputated fucking leg, an arm. And now you have to think, how are you going to handle your life now? Because you don't have any family members. You have to adjust. And that being said, you are now going to look at life differently. That is what changes the way we live. That is changes the way we think. Why does it have to come to that if we want somebody that we care about, that we love, or just someone that I came across in the street and they're misinformed, which that could be subjective. That could be, that, that's very sticky territory right there. But what if it's clear as day that what they see is something that was believed years and years ago, that facts, education prove that what they believe in is non-existent. It could be anything. But how do you help those people? How do you inform those people? I'm not saying fucking cut their brake lines and let them fucking experience that collision. <laughs> what I'm saying is you have to approach something lightly and delicately because it will have the reverse effect. But the only way to do it is to be direct, fucking honest, and bold, and hold nothing back about what is happening in their life, in your life, or the ones you care about's life, because that's what matters to you, is saying what you feel. If they choose to ignore you, it don't matter. You did your part as an individual. You can live your life knowing you did the right thing. Maybe that's not their time yet. Maybe that wasn't their pivotal moment. Yeah. Absolutely. You, yes. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that. Nate, you, I, I try to keep it on track because I just want to share every fucking thing, man. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. You're good, man. I love it. I love it. And I love your energy. I love your enthusiasm. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Mm. Well, for everybody that's enjoyed my sense of humor, my bold, crazy, that there's a lot of fucking, I can say a lot there, but we'll just keep it right there. If you want to enjoy more of me, you can check out my podcast, Your Transformation Station. It's everywhere. Also, I got another one. I just started up Your Transformation Examples. Other than that, I really enjoy the show. You are a great fucking host. I love the questions, your energy. You made me feel right at home. I do appreciate this. Dude, Greg, I appreciate you, man.
Thanks for coming on the show. If you guys are listening to this and you loved what he had to say, make sure to go check out both of his podcasts. And now you have three podcasts to send to one to three people that you may know that need to hear these messages. But share his podcast. Give it a good rating. Give it to your friends. Hear the message. But most importantly, be authentic and be vulnerable with yourself. And so you can live authentically in the world and encourage people to do the same. As we always ask, send this podcast and Greg's podcast to one in three people you know need to hear the message. Shoot us all a five-star review on iTunes and we're out.